Because if I can give up design or stuff in my garage or other deals that I'm able to put together in order to be able to get my 10 acres, that is a win. <laughs> First of all, welcome to episode 10. It's been a short and long journey with a couple of unexpected hiatuses, and I hopefully, please forgive me. I do humbly apologize, and I promise to make a better effort to make sure that these come more consistent and on time and with more timely information. So with that out of the way, uh, today's show is going to be a little bit different. We've talked about a bunch of things if you've been following us since the very beginning and this one is going to be really important that you really grasp the concept of this because this is kind of one of those things that once you get this part a lot of the other things that we've talked about will make a whole lot more sense and um, before that we got a webinar that's going to be coming up in about 30 days this webinar is gonna be action packed. We're gonna be talking about a lot of the things that we've covered, except in a little bit more detail and it'll be more concise. And it'll be some time in there where you can ask some questions. So be on the lookout if you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you're following us at or listening or shoot us an email at info at barterscoop.com if you need to know when the webinar is coming up. We'll have some signups and make sure that anyone that you know that is a business owner, professional looking to uh, get some strategic advantages, make sure you let them know because this will be uh, very impactful, I promise. It'll be more in depth because you guys are gonna, you guys and ladies will have some questions that will help to incite the overall thought process. And we look to have a, a, a guest on that particular uh, webinar that will help take things to a, another level also as well. So. Uh, make sure if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe for the latest updates, newsletters. You can go on our website and subscribe, and it is very simple. Go to barterscoop.com and sign up for the newsletter, and we look forward to having you. So we're already over three months into 2019, and this year is turning out to be really, really interesting. If you notice, it's kind of noisy because we're at a coffee shop right now recording this. So if you hear cars and trucks or the noise, it gets a little noisy. Hey, we're right out here. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see, you know, we're in a busy area. So we're doing our best, our sound guys, making sure that the audio quality and hopefully the video quality is coming in real good. So well, I'm excited for today's show. Well, we got a lot that we want to, uh, to pass off. Um, Hard versus soft when it comes to bartering. <laughs> this is not an adult movie, so get your mind out of the wrong place. But hard versus soft when it comes to bartering is talking about something else. What we're referring to is goods or currency. You know, in, in trading or bartering, just like you do in regular cash world, you have hard things and you have soft things. So a good example of that would be if, uh, if somebody came up to you and said, hey, I'll give you this, uh, this, this tea, this iced tea, a cup of iced tea, and I want uh, $5 for it, or I think it's worth $5. And another individual came up because they, they wanted to take this iced tea that they wanted $5 for, and they wanted to get, let's say, your Nike t-shirt, you had a Nike t-shirt and they wanted to give you this iced tea for that Nike t-shirt. Then another individual came up to you and said, hey, I'll give you five US dollars for your Nike t-shirt. And let's just, for the sake of example, for the sake of this example, let's say you only wanted $5 for your Nike t-shirt. Well, guess what? The person who had five US dollars would have had the hard currency. Hard just simply means the most valuable. Now, it's the most valuable wherever you are. Let me repeat that. It means it's the most, it's considered the most valuable wherever you are located. If I'm in another country, the US dollar might not be the most valuable currency. Even though it is the world reserve currency, it might not be the most valuable currency in the area that I'm located 
for a number of reasons. If you have uh, individuals who are starving, then food might be the number one currency. So it could vary. So it doesn't have to always necessarily mean that one thing is going to be consistent. You know, like in some areas, it could be gold. In, in another area, it could be whatever whatever it might be. But that that's going to vary. So you have what's called to in the bartering, basically the things that you want to look, look for in the world to determine this. So in, in Venezuela right now, there's a lot of turmoil and, and, and up, upheaval and uproar going on because of their financial crisis and not even just but the government. I mean, there's all sorts of crises going on in Venezuela right now. So if you look at it, if you were someone who was sick and in need of medicine, medicine would be something that would be very hard on your personal scale that you consider trading or selling if you, if you had medicine or were in need of medicine. Now, the person who actually had the medicine that you need, that, that would be very highly, that would be a high commodity, highly traded commodity in Venezuela right now. So even if you had cash in, in that country right now, their currency, it wouldn't be as valuable as medicine because medicine would be in shorter supply. So hopefully that makes sense that how you have to evaluate that depending on where it is that you're located in the world. Uh, food, you know, power, they, you know, they had power situations. So when you have different individuals that are facing certain crises, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a crisis. It could be you have tickets to the hottest movie in town right now, and, and I have cash and the tickets sold for 100 bucks, but because they're so highly sought after, your tickets are so highly sought after, you might be able to get three or $400 for your tickets. They've become extremely hard to the individuals that are looking for those tickets. Um, in the barter world, typically, the hard thing is something considered to be something like a computer or a car or a boat or a microphone or a mixer or whatever the case may be, of cell phones, technology. All of those things are considered hard in the barter world. But I want to kind of mix your perception up a little bit so that you just don't think that when you're trading, somebody thinks that because I got a car, it's more valuable than your massage services. Because in, in theory, the massage services would be considered soft. Not that you can't charge what it's worth, but if I went out here and held up an iPad and I held up another sign saying massage services, which one do you think people would go to first? Now, in most cases, people are going to go to the iPad. Now, the guy who's got some really serious back issues would go towards the massage services. You know, last week I would have killed for the massage services. So that would have been a hard item for me, even though it was a soft service. It was a service. And usually you kind of look at it as the hard items typically have less profit in them. You know, if if I have a if I have a camera that's a thousand bucks and I paid eight hundred dollars for it, then I might have two hundred dollars or a little bit of leeway in there. Whereas a service you know, you got your time and your service, which has a value, but there's a lot of profit in the service. That's the reason why they're considered to be soft. Usually things that have a lot of profit in them are soft, like advertising, uh, print, uh, 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 marketing, uh, design work, graphics design work, web design work. Uh, any of those things are considered uh, chiropractic, massage, all of those things are considered to, you know, have uh, a lot of margin in them. So when you look at that scenario and you say, well, you have 20% margin in your electronic, right? And I got 70% margin in my service. So yours is harder than mine. And that's, that's pretty much what they are telling you if you look at it on a, on a scale, if you look at what's the hardest. But what I, the way I want you to look at it is... The hardest thing is what's most valuable in the area that you are located. Like we said earlier, if you're in Venezuela right now and you have a asthma inhaler, 
that could be worth a boat depending on the individual. Now, I'm not trying to tell anyone to go out here and take advantage of anybody. That's not what we're saying. Just trying to put perspective to it that when you have something that's of value and recognize that what you have is of value to the individual that is uh, considering it, that's how you want to look at it on the scale of uh, hardness, so to speak, uh, as to whether what you have is harder or softer than what the other person has. Now, let's say, for instance, you have something that's hard. You got, you know, uh, in demand, you got a car and you're considering bartering for the car. And, you know, you got individuals out there that are like, well, I want to, I'd love to trade for a car. Um, I have massage, I have massage services, right? Well, what you could do is when you have something that's harder, sometimes you can trade for things that are softer. Typically, you always, I'm pretty sure that a lot of y'all are familiar with the show that used to come on, Barter Kings. Well, in Barter Kings, they always talked about trading up. Always talked about trading up. Well, give me a second. In Barter Kings, they always talked about trading up. Well, the truth of the matter is sometimes you can trade down. But when you trade down, you want to trade down in this scenario right here. We have something that's hard, a car, right? And someone else has something else that's soft, services. We'll, we'll say massage therapy services. No offense there. No, no, please, any of you massage therapists that are out there, I love all of y'all. I'm not saying your service, I'm not devaluing your service. I'm just saying that if somebody had a choice to trade between a car and massage therapy, most, most likely they're going to trade for the car. So now the individual who has the car is considering trading with the massage therapist. For simple math, $1,000 car, $1,000 worth of massage therapy services. Would that be fair? Would that be even? Would that be a lateral trade? And if you're in the position of having a car and you're getting ready to trade down for services, you should really be thinking at trading at a ratio because you have the harder item. And in that particular scenario right now, you might even want to trade for twice as many massage therapy hours for the car because you do have the harder item. And in essence, you're trading down to trade up because you're getting a better ratio than where, than where you started at. Because if you just take the car, and let's just say the car was in great shape, that's valued at $1,000 for simple math, and you did a lateral trade for massage therapy services, you're not going to be able to easily go liquidate $1,000 worth of massage therapy services as you would a $1,000 car. But now, if you had $2,000 worth of massage therapy services, you may be able to sell uh, $1,500 worth of those massage therapy services for $1,000 and keep $500 worth of the services for yourself. So in essence, you trade it down to trade up because you got a better ratio. And knowing where your item or service, product or service is on the hardness scale will always allow you to be able to take those things into consideration. Um, you, know, you know, right now, because the US dollar is the world reserve currency, the US dollar is pretty much the highest on the hardness scale in, in, most, in most countries right now. Anywhere you go in the world, for the most part, you can spend a dollar. If the US dollar, if that changes, then whatever the new currency is becomes the hardest thing on the hardness scale. That can even, you know, some people would, would argue and say gold is, you know, but you know, right now, if I walked into the coffee shop here and took my gold coins in there, they're not gonna take it. You know, uh, Bitcoin, you know, all, they're, they're, they're just now I'm not going to say in two years from now. Once again, that's the reason why we said based on where you're at in your area and location, because you may be in an area that they will take gold or they'll take some sort of uh, item for consideration. But I'm just not in one right now. That's why you always evaluate this hardness, softness based on where you're at. When you have a good idea that it always shows you where you're at in the trade and helps you to be able to better position yourself. 
Um, I got on here in SHTF, and I think everybody knows what that means when, you know, when eh, boop, boop, hits the fan, you know, things change quick. And it'll be really important in those sorts of scenarios to know, you know, you know, like, for instance, I'm, I'm doing, you know, a, a podcast on bartering and that might have a certain value right now. But when, you know, things get, you know, apocalyptic out there. You know, I might not be able to go barter with that hardly anymore. I might be able to teach some individuals on how they can uh, make soap or do some things and show them how they can trade. But as far as people tuning in and wanting to listen to a podcast, we, there, there may be no Internet. So always knowing the current situation in society, paying attention to the things around you. And when you're in business, you should be hypersensitive and, and, and aware of this because you have things that are constantly changes. There could be other vendors that might be in more demand of what it is that you offer. And if you look for opportunities to be able to trade your products or services to another vendor that may have some things that you could use, you might be able to get these ratios for yourself, especially when you're, like I said, cognizant of how the hard versus soft actually works. Uh, we're just scrolling through here. And for instance, you know, let's let's just let's kind of give a few reasons to to think about in in and how let's use the orange as the new black. You know, in prison, and we put an art we had an article on our website about this. In prison, ramen noodles can be considered like cash, you know, stamps are like cash. Uh cigarettes, you can have a pack of cigarettes. And, 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 and a pack of cigarettes can actually not be worth as much as a ramen noodle just simply because an individual is hungry. So if you, if you ever watch that show, it, it's, a, it's a show, you know, any of your movies that have prison movies behind it, they're going to have bartering in there in some type of way. So that, you know, that gives you uh, an, an idea as to uh, how that can work. And I think we've covered quite a bit. I almost got, I think we covered quite a bit. So, yeah, when you're looking at the difference between um, hard versus soft, you want to always just take all of those things into consideration. What it is that you have, um, you know, how marketable is it right now? You know, if you've got something in high demand, you know, for instance, if you had an S10, uh, Samsung 10 plus right now, that's a hot item. I mean, it's in high demand. So if you had something like that and then somebody else had, you know, a, a, a service or they had a product, you know, let's just say that they had some microphones. You, you might even be able to get three to one or two to one, a bigger ratio because you've got the hot S10. So always, always, always know when you're doing a trade where you're at on the scale of hard to soft. And if you do that, if you know that, you'll always come up, you'll come up good. So if you're trading your, if you're, if you're dealing with a barter network and you're trading your product or service into the barter network for trade currency, for trade dollars, right? So you do a thousand dollar service, you get paid a thousand dollar in trade credits. And then now you can spend, sorry about that. You can spend those thousand dollars anywhere within inside of the barter network. Anything that you buy with that $1,000, you want to start looking at, A, does it match up with my plan? Because remember earlier on, we talked about the importance of having your, your plan, your life plan, your business plan, and making sure that all of the trades that you're conducting are in line with your life plan and your business plan. So is, is, your, uh, is, is the things that you're buying with your trade currency in line with those things? Is it for relaxation? Well, if you took something that you, let's say you traded an item that you knew was soft. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, you, you had a lot of margin in it, or it was something that you weren't using that was in your garage, or it was downtime or excess capacity. All of those things that we talked about earlier on in, uh, in I believe, episode one and two, it was something that you really didn't need, and you traded those things into the network, and you're able to get uh, things like relaxation, uh, spa treatments, uh, land, or anything that you're converting something that was soft to you, to you, something soft to you, 
into something that was hard for you because the barter network works a little bit different because it's indirect. So you're, you have the ability to make sure that you can put something soft out and get something hard back. Now, does that mean you're going to get a car? Does that mean you're going to get a plane, you know, a G5 or something like that? No. But if something is on your list, back to the life plan and the business plan, and your list, your business expenses, if something is hard to you, if it's on your list, it's hard. So if I'm looking for land, right, and to somebody else, you know, I got a 1,000 acres. You know, I can get rid of 10 because I want to get my house renovated on barter, on trade, right? So I'm getting rid of 10 acres. Well, those 10 acres are on my list. They're on my list. And because they're on my list, they're hard to me. So if I can give up things that are soft, if I can give up design or stuff in my garage or other deals that I'm able to put together in order to be able to get my 10 acres, that is a win. So always know where things are. It's, it's, it's kind of like almost like the barter theory of relativity, so to speak. Going to leave it with that. So next episode is going to be coming right when it's supposed to come. I, once again, apologize, but we, we got a lot plan for 2019. We're already three months going into the fourth month into 2019. I hope everybody's having an awesome year. I hope you're able to apply some of the things that we've been talking about. If you have any questions, hit us up at info at barterscoop.com. You can pretty much follow us on any social media at Barterscoop. And we're about to be out. You know, that there's a, um, what is this, this saying that we, we had? Um, The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. See you next week.